Okay, so this morning we have um, representatives from two companies who uh, do some very different, uh, but also some fascinating technology in the industry. Um, I'm working, as James says, for Maple, so that's a, a technology software solution. Um, Joey, first of all, this is like speed dating. Do you want to quickly tell us who you are and, and, and what you do? Yeah, um, nice to meet everyone. Uh, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Leslie a new technology born out of the pandemic to capture missed opportunities, a new way to order, tip and pay. Um, set the business up uh, about nine months ago, built a team of about 100, uh, just over 100 people across the UK, US and Europe, and hopefully soon to be coming to the Middle East. Okay, and just very quickly, um, your relationship with Saudi Arabia, is this your first visit? Yeah. Or this is a new market for you? What's, uh, yeah, what's the... uh, new market, um, first time here, uh, and look forward to many, many more visits. Fantastic. Peter. Uh, my name is Peter Brune. I've worked in the uh, restaurant and hospitality industry, done everything from street food to private islands and hotels for the last 20 years in the UK and Denmark and France. I now uh, head up the development of a company called Boxu. We were meant to launch in London in 2018, but everything got postponed, so our site number two is now site number one. Uh, Boxu is a platform for uh, food producers, chefs, restaurateurs, as well as customers, bring them all together. And we do that uh, through both the digital side, but also large bricks and mortar sites. We're constructing our first one in Jeddah at the moment, about 50,000 square meters of space full of anything food related, really. So uh, then the digital platform will connect all those businesses together, allow them to trade with each other, as well as customers outside the building um, and across borders even. Fantastic, and just explain your relationship with Saudi Arabia. You're quite a regular visitor, aren't you? I am quite a regular visitor because we're, the first site will be in Jeddah. We've got three confirmed sites in, in Jeddah. We're looking at a couple of sites in Riyadh actually uh, at the moment. So um, I come here every six weeks or so. Okay, fantastic. So, technology, we have 17 minutes, 37 seconds to uh, explain the world of technology, really, and nail it, and everyone can go away happy with all the solutions in hand. Um, technology is absolutely everywhere. We're now, when you look at your mobile phone, we are the center of everything. We, when you looked at a map 20 years ago, you had to find yourself. Now, we are that red dot or that blue dot in, in the center of everything. So, maybe we can start with just really, you know, in your own experience, your own perspective, tell us really about the role of technology in restaurants and bars these days. What does it mean to you? Um, well, personally, I think it's the key ingredient for the success of the hospitality industry uh, today. You know, why can you go on Uber and order an Uber to your front door? Or, you know, why can you go on Amazon and order something to your house the following day, but in a restaurant, you know, or in a hotel? It's one industry that hasn't changed with the times. Um, so there's a huge opportunity here to play with technology. Um, and there's so many missed opportunities, uh, and that's what we're doing here at Leslie, to capture those missed opportunities. Okay, fantastic. Peter? Yeah, I'll, I'll echo that. I think, I think what has changed, um, I'm going to try not to use the word pandemic too much, today, but what has changed dramatically over the last few years is that there's always been, or for the later years, there's been um, quite a high focus on back-of-house technology and kitchen management systems and things like that, whereas the pandemic kind of forced everything front of house and allowed restaurants to pivot. So uh, I think that's, that's what we're seeing at the moment is that is the integration of the two that will allow everything to work a, a lot more seamlessly um, and also trade outside the four walls that most restaurants were restricted to beforehand. And are people embracing technology quite easily or is it a challenge for your sort of things? Um, I think it depends. I think there was, a, there was a lot of operators who were obviously forced to rush technology into place in order to just keep trading. And I think some operators are now left with solution that are, solutions that are probably not perfect and might not actually work that well to, um, to operating normally again and having customers in-house, in which I think you know, leaves space for, for companies like um, Joey's to flourish, basically. Do you find the same, Joey? Do you, are companies struggling to embrace technology, or do you find people very open to the idea and really want to get it on board as quick as possible? Well, I think it leads into your, um, your follow-on question about the, the pandemic. You know, um, The pandemic has fast-forwarded this, uh, this, the, the ability for technology in this industry uh, massively. 
Um, and uh, there is challenges, but we're seeing an uptake of, of customers on a daily basis. Um, you know, because there's so many opportunities out there, uh, and in this in these difficult times, you know, what is the most important thing to a uh, to a restaurant or to a bar or to a hotel? It's um, the you know the bottom line. Absolutely. So if 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 we can increase their revenues uh, and decrease the wastage by technology, then it's a it's a no brainer. Yep. Absolutely, it makes sense. I mean, it's you know, as you say, kind of the, the COVID, the pandemic has really accelerated everything, hasn't it? So, you know, people talk about you know, six months in six months, you've done what you've typically done in six years. Mm -hmm. So it's really been a dramatic kind of intake. So, what does good technology uh, look like? Sorry, sorry I just one one point. I think there's also when it comes to technology, we have a tendency to focus on the visible technology, so kitchen exactly. management systems or ordering systems or payment systems that we actively engage engage with. But I think also what, what has happened over the last couple of years is that you have technologies such as air purification systems and, and cleanliness systems in, um, in, in restaurants and bars and stuff like that, which I think will have a, it has a, a much higher importance to the customer now. And it's something that I think we'll see, even though we are, fingers crossed, through, through it now, I think we'll see a much higher focus going forward on those kind of technologies so you as well. See, you see the greater value in the back of house, the invisible technology as opposed to yeah, the guest Yeah, I, th I think I was thinking it. about it last night. I checked in here and you know, you, you turn on your, you get into your room and there's the promotional video on the TV and you can see them cleaning the rooms and, and we are past it and you know, very few people are wearing masks and we all feel very secure moving around. But I think we still feel reassured by that so I think it's something that will be uh, continue to be a focal point in terms of um, reassuring uh, our customers of, of the care that we take to look after them. Sure Joe your, your technology is really more front of house yeah so you maybe want to just very quickly explain how yours your, your uh, solution works very quickly? Yep so if you're in a in a restaurant um, you'd have a QR code on the table uh, and sometimes in areas you'd not normally expect to get an order. So whether it's uh, in the toilets, terraces, wherever it might be, it's there to capture those missed opportunities. So a customer... So you, you'd be sitting on the toilet placing your order, that's what you're telling you know, us, yeah? We've got yep. customers that are doing that. Okay. Um, so you can scan a QR code, opens up a menu on your phone, whether you speak Arabic, French, English, whatever language, you'll convert <coughs> into that language, and then you're able to order instantly, Apple Pay pops up or Google Pay, and you can pay for that transaction. That, that's, uh, that's one, and the other way is the quickest way to pay in a, in a fine dining restaurant. So you would order as normal, but at the end of your meal, there's a nice QR code on the table in marble or whatever it might be, and you can literally just scan. It takes all that information from the POS, and you can pay instantly, mm -hmm. which is obviously making everything more efficient. We're seeing um, wait staff having an extra 35% of time to be able to serve more tables. Uh, and also we're seeing an increase in spend um, per customer based on having the ability to, oh, you know what, I'll order another starter. Sure. So you're obviously the biggest fan of uh, you know, the front of house technology. So what's your view on the, on the back of house technology? What, well, the the stuff that people don't see. Well, the back of house technology is, uh, is fundamental. And I think the biggest thing with all of this, and it, and it pins our business, is the data. You know, it's... Um, you know, if you go into, and I'll use an example which some of you might not know or, or know, but one of the highest end members clubs in London, Annabelle's, if you walk into Annabelle's, they know who you are, when you last came, um, and they pretty much know your, you know, that's why you're paying for a membership. But why if you go into a, uh, you know, a fast casual dining restaurant or McDonald's or wherever it might be, they don't know who you are or when you last came. So imagine what we can do with data, with the back end, um, with AI, um, and it's turning a, a restaurant, any venue, a cafe, into a smart venue. So that's always the question, isn't it? You, there's so much data around, but what the hell do you do with it? Yeah. yeah. How do you interpret it, and how does that lead to an output of improved marketing, improved operations, improved sales? Mm. It, it's a major, major challenge, yeah? yeah. Peter, any yeah, I, I think in terms of the back of house technology, one of the things that one of the positive things of of the, the development of that is is that it has brought a lot of operators a lot closer to their business. Where traditionally you'd have restaurateurs who wouldn't really know whether it was a good month or a bad month until they got a call from their bookkeeper and everybody was a bit nervous. Whereas I think now the the data delivered by those systems um, give them direct access on a daily basis and allows them to 
to pivot quite quickly and react to any changes in, in trading patterns. Same thing with the workforce management systems. You know, it will allow you to almost on a daily basis know exactly where you are and where you need to be the day after. Sure. And also, I think with the pandemic, a lot of the, the middle management disappeared. Yeah. So the senior manager got to know and understand their business in a much, much greater level. So to have that, that bit of data yeah, and the senior manager seeing it rather than being filtered has been a kind of you know, really good learning curve and uh, interesting kind of stage for a lot of uh, leadership to actually learn and understand the business a, a, a lot greater. Is, is there, just a, a random question, is there resistance when you're trying to implement technology into brands and operators? You know, do the middle managers, the buyers, do they get the support they need from the senior management? Do they understand the benefit that technology is actually going to give their business? You know, the real kind of the ROI, the simplicity, the integrations, is that too complex or is there, is there good buy-in at senior level? I think it depends a lot on the approach that's taken by the people who introduce the, the, the systems. Some uh, companies fail by just kind of throwing it in there without thinking all the processes through. And it may be one, one small system that will do one particular thing for the, for the operations of this company or this restaurant, but it will still affect the other processes. So I think it's very important to... Uh, make sure that they're, they're, they're introduced gently and, and uh, democratized so everybody understands it and that the whole process from beginning to end is analyzed to make sure that you cover all the touch points of that, um, of whatever system it is you're putting sure. in. Sure. Do you want to maybe give a great example? I mean, Joey, you've had your 30 second elevator pitch. Do you want to maybe explain how your technology works? Um, no, I think it's, 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 it's not. Um, our technology is, is basically. Uh, it's an integration more than anything, so it, it, we're not really trying to invent anything new. What we're trying to do is, is just connect people a lot more and allow them to, uh, to um, manage the, the back of house and the front of house at the same time. So, so we're not inventing the, reinventing the wheel, if you like. We're just trying to make uh, operations a lot easier for everybody involved. Sure. In terms of embedding technology in a new company, how challenging is that for, as a supplier and also from an operator's point of view? So just to uh, add on to, the, uh, to that point, it's, it's, it's very challenging, you know, especially for the middle, uh, middle management. You know, a lot of waiters and wait staff, when we go into venues and look, you know, we're, we're only at the beginning of our journey, uh, they go, well, hang on a minute, are you here to replace our job? Um, and the answer is no. You know, it's like a tool. It's like an email. You but know, it, it can also supplement because, it, you know, the staff shortage is, exactly. is a global so, issue. So, so technology what, can solve part of yeah, that so issue. So what yeah. we're really doing is making everyone uh, more, uh, more efficient. Mm -hmm. um, and what we've, we're about to launch, um, which we're going to launch directly into the U.S. market, uh, but also here potentially, is around tipping. You mm -hmm. know, how does someone receive a tip if you don't have cash? Which, yeah, we're, we're very much contactless these days. So I'm yeah. sure people are receiving... Uh, Far less tips yeah. than ever. So yeah. with the same technology, we've been able to uh, build out a, a platform where I could scan a QR code. It would come up with a picture of Paul. I'd go $20 and the following day. Just 20 Or yeah. $50. Yeah, exactly. um, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And that money would be in your bank account tomorrow. Um, and, uh, you know, it was $80 billion given in tips last year. Wow. Um, and, uh, you know, we're going into a cashless society. Absolutely. Peter? Um, yeah, I think it's, it's what technology like Joey's does is, is it makes life easy in the restaurant and, and it makes uh, staff able to focus on, on what they're there for, which is to service and to help and, and to talk to people and guide them through the experience. Uh, it also makes the operational side of it easier in terms of digitalizing the payments and not having to count cash and all of those things. And I think one of the things that we're trying to do, coming back to some of the things that were mentioned in previous sessions, is what we're trying to do with Boxu is very much take small local, I wouldn't even say brands, but small local operators. So everybody's welcome to trade with us. We're happy to take the Zoomers and the, the more international brands. But really, the core of the business is taking small independent operators, even street food traders, and giving them a platform to stand on and giving them all the tools in terms of the technology to make them focus on or allow them to focus on what they're good at and what they're passionate about, which is more often the product than it's the, the business side of things. Sure, fantastic. Just to kind of go back to one of my original questions, just expand it a little bit further on that. You know, tell me a little bit about you know, what, what is the perception of what is good customer technology? 
How would you define that? Um, well, in, in my opinion, it's uh, frictionless. Frictionless. You know, so uh, you want to, on the customer side, you know, you, no one wants to download anything, no one wants to be signing anything, so you want to make it as seamless as possible, which doesn't affect, you know, remember, why is someone going <coughs> to a restaurant or to a stadium or to a hotel? They're going to spend time with their loved ones. Um, or, you know, for a business meeting, you know, time is precious. So what you need to make sure with technology is it doesn't become a burden. It becomes, you know, a part of life and it's just a easier way uh, of doing it. And I imagine it. mobile first is absolutely up, up there as one of the number one things, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Peter? Yeah, for, for me, good technology is the, is the technology that removes... Uh, or can remove unnecessary hassle, but without removing anything from the from the experience. So, you know, great technology is the ability to check into a hotel without having to go to the reception desk, for example. You know, some people, and you should still have a reception desk, because some people enjoy that, and some people would like to get a tip for a good restaurant or talk about their room or whatever it might be. But most people, I think definitely most people in this room, just want to get in and out as quickly as possible. So I think that, that's, a, for me, as an example of great technology. Or the ability to upload your vaccination document to uh, the airline before you fly so that it's all checked and you can meet at the airport, you can turn up the airport, get through quickly and without having the hassle or being nervous about it because you know everything is done beforehand. To me, that's, that's great technology. Okay, just a housekeeping question. Uh, we did have four minutes left and suddenly we have seven minutes left, so I'm not sure uh, how many minutes we actually have left if someone just can confirm that to us. Uh, whilst you're working that out, um, how essential is it that the technology also aligns with the company objectives? Yeah, what would you think about that? Do you have challenges? I think that's that the easiest front? question of the day, basically. Thank you. <laughs> um, Save it to the end. Yeah. No, I think it's incredible. It's, of course it's important. Of course it's important. It's... It, it, it's um, it, it, Hospitality is all about experience, and it's, it, is, it is somebody who used the word emotions earlier, and it is all about emotions and the lighting and the music. And, but it's also, it, it shouldn't feel transactional. So I think it, you need to pick the right technology. You need to pick the right user experience of that technology to, to fit into your company's objectives uh, to support that experience. Sure, Jay. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, everything we do is white label to the venue. Um, you know, it needs to be in the DNA of, of, of that venue, whether it's a super high-end venue or is it a, you know, it's a, 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 a cafe. You need to, it needs to feel, it needs to be part of their brand. Sure. Okay, fantastic. Another uh, random or separate question. Um, are there any, any particular technology or solutions that, you, that are not your own that you particularly admire and like in the business that you think add tremendous value to the industry? This is a. I, I mean, I think, I think the, 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 the obvious answer is things like Deliveroo. I think Deliveroo very quickly, not that they've made any money, but you know, still, they, I think they very quickly delivered a solution that worked on most parameters. Um, so that's like the first thing that springs sure. to mind for me. Okay. So mine begins with Deliver, but not Deliveroo. It's called a company uh, which most of you won't know, but it's called Deliverect. Mm -hmm. So the biggest problem for me in, in, um, with technology and hospitality industry is integration. You know, sure. you've got all your POSs, you've got, you know, these different things. And, you know, especially in, in Europe and the UK with all these delivery apps, you've got Uber Eats, this one, that one. So this company basically links all of that technology into one solution. Okay, fantastic. And we talk a lot about we talk about back of house solutions. You know, we talk about front of house solutions, but also employee solutions. If if you if you can nail those, mm. then that's that's really key. It's like Richard Branson always used to say, if you know, look after your staff, and they will look after people. Have you found that kind of thing as well? Have you, working in in the brands and operators. Yeah, I, I think definitely the sort of the, the whole workforce management side of it has has um, it's created a lot of problems, but it's solved even more, I think. It was, it, it's probably one of the hardest things to implement, especially with the new systems that will kind of do predictive rotors and all of those things for you. Having said that, the amount of time that it saves in terms of, of document management and even covering shifts where, I mean, I remember the good old days where you have to spend half your morning calling up people on their, 
on their landlines to and see if they can come to work. Yeah, and now you press a button yeah. going and it goes out to 100 people, would you like yeah. a shift at 11 o'clock today? So yeah. I, I think definitely, but it's, it's also one of, the, one of the trickier systems to manage, I think. Okay. Joey, any last comments? Uh, no, on, uh, on that point, the pe uh, on the people, uh, that's where our tipping product was born from. Exactly. You know, exactly. It's, for, it's for the waiters, you know, uh, that's the most important thing. They're the lifeblood of the hospitality industry, and they always will be. Absolutely. So, um, you know, you need to make sure they're happy. Okay, gentlemen, thank you. Do we have time for any more questions? Yeah, maybe one from the audience. No, anything from the audience, please? Just raise your hand. No? Then I think we're free to go. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thank